أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I am with you on this lecture number 18. And I would like to talk about two main topics related to the main subject during, during this series about how we improve our thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first subject I would like to talk about, the, the first topic. Imagine if there is somebody, he is your body in this dunya. Whenever you feel frustrated, you ask a help from him. So you sit with him, you talk to him, you feel comforted. He's your close friend. He's your supporter. Whenever you need a help, you ask from him. Whenever you are in some hard time, so you ask for his support. If you pass, if you pass through any challenges, any lack of money or lack of uh, being a uh, socialized so he is your body he is always there for you so whenever you are in need so you go to this person and he never hesitate to help you he never hesitate to come to you at any time at anywhere and he never say no to you at all how do you feel about him? You feel that he is he's your body. He is the one whom you love him so much. And you believe that if he asks you for anything, you, can, you will do it for him. Because you love him. He's been kind with you all the time. He's being so supportive to you all the time. He's being always there for you all the time. So how come you can say no to him? That's impossible. You will do whatever you can to be there for him. The same way that he did for you. هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الإحسان. Allah said, Indeed, the reward of being good with people is to receive good from them. Yes. Yes, dear brothers and sisters. If we are talking about a human being, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't you remember these words? How many times Allah was there for you subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many times? How many times he helped you? How many times he saved you? How many times he blessed you with comfort, with patience, with blessings, with directions, with guidance, with someone to help you? He brought something to you to make you happy. He made things happen to you. To make your life easy. How many times dear brothers and sisters. Yes dear brothers and sisters. He is Allah. We asked him. We asked him many times. And he responded. We have been in troubles. And he saved us. We have been in so shameful situation. And he covered us. We have been through many difficulties and he make things easy for us. 
Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam. When he told him to go to his people. Go to your people. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind them with the days of Allah. Yes, dear brothers and sisters. Those are considered the days of Allah. When he saved you or saved someone you love. When he healed your sickness. When he healed someone you love. When he helped you. When he opened your eyes for something good, you was in doubt. When you are lost and he helped you to go out from your lost. When you are in trouble and he find a way for you. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, he is Allah who is always there for us. But the shaitan, as he promised Allah, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ The shaitan, his goal in this dunya is to steer us away from the path of Allah so that we will forget to thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will do his best to make us forget about how many times Allah has saved us. How many times Allah has helped us. How many times Allah was there for us. Yes, indeed. We have to feel, to feel shy from Allah. Because we forget. Because many times Allah called us, but we didn't do it. Many times we forget. We forget our good prayers. We forget the zikr of Allah. We become so busy so that we forget to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear brothers and sisters, one time Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad, rahimahullah, when he was dying, he cried. They asked him, why are you crying? You are going to meet the one you love. He said, I'm not crying from that. But indeed, I know that Allah will forgive my sins. And he will give me his mercy. But when I am in option, if I have to choose between standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will shower me with his mercy and forgive my sins, Or the other option is to stay as dust and never be resurrected again. I will choose the second option. They asked him why. He said, I'm so shy to stand in front of him with all my sins and shortcomings. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, we have to feel shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For whatever he make for us, whatever he did for us, whatever he helped, whatever he gave, but we forget. We are so weak. The shaitan trick us and we keep forgetting. We keep trying to escape. We keep trying to do tricks to run away from being responsible and being Piet to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, it is how to feel shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second topic, which is also related to this topic, dear brothers and sisters, is that when we think What is our right on Allah and what is the right of Allah on us? And I will bring you this hadith. Ibn al-Daylami, he said, I came, Ubayy ibn Ka'b radiyallahu anhu, and I said, I have something in doubt about destiny, about fate, about fate. 
in my heart. So don't you talk to me about it. So maybe Allah will help me to remove this from my heart. So dear brothers and sisters, Ibn Daylami, he's one of the followers. So he met Ubay ibn Ka'b because he has some doubt about the belief in Al-Qada wal Qadr, in the destiny, the good or bad. So look what Ubay ibn Ka'b said to him, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, if Allah punished the people of earth and the people of the heavens, he is not oppressing them at all. And if he showered them with his mercy, it is better for them than all their good deeds. And if you spend a money which is in the size of the mountain of Uhud for the sake of Allah, Allah will never accept it from you if you don't believe that whatever whatever happens to you, it will never miss you. And whatever miss you, it will never reach to you. And if you die without disbelief, you will enter hellfire. I will explain. So this is a very powerful hadith. The Prophet sallallahu here, he said, if Allah has punished the people of heaven and the people of earth, he is not oppressing them. He is justified. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he is punishing someone, he is always just. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith Qudusi that I have forbidden the oppression on myself. So don't be oppressors among yourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never op being oppressor to anyone. Will never be except justify. And he mentioned in Al-Quran Al-Kareem that he will never be oppressor to anyone, even with the atom size, with the size of atom, even with the size of the dot or the drop of water or less than that. So Allah will never, will never be an oppressor to anyone at all. He is Al-Adl. One of his names, Al-Adl. So he's justified always, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the absolute justice, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he shower them with his mercy, his mercy is better for them than all the good deeds what they are doing in their life. Yes, indeed. The mercy from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is better for us than all our good deeds. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you will never enter Jannah because of your deeds, but indeed because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, not even yourself. He said, not even myself, except if Allah shower me with his mercy. And then in this hadith, he said, and if you spend the amount of mountain of Uhud as gold, Allah will never accept it from you if you did not believe in, in the destiny and the fate that it is from Allah. So if, it's, if there is something happened to you and Allah write it upon you, it will never be mistaken you. And if something has mistaken you, miss you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not write it upon you, it will never reach you. You have to believe this. And then 
Ibn Daylami said, then I went to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and I asked him, then he told me the same hadith. Then I went to Hudayf ibn al-Yaman and I asked him, then he said to me the same hadith. And then I went to Zayd bin Thabit, may Allah be merc- be, be Allah be pleased with them. He, then he said the same hadith. So dear brothers and sisters, from this hadith, we we should know that Allah is extreme justice, absolute justice. He will never be oppressor to any one of us at all. And we have to believe about the destiny. What happens, it has to happen. And what we, what is missed from us, it has to be missed. So there is no doubt. And we cannot say, if I did so, it never happened. If I didn't do, this could happen. This is wrong. So dear brothers and sisters, one time... The Prophet وسلم, asked Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu anhu, what is the right of Allah on his servants and what is the right of the servants on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, Allah knows better, ya Rasulullah. Then he said, the Prophet وسلم, the right of Allah on his servants to worship him and do not commit shirk and the right of his servants on him if they worshipped him to make them enter Jannah. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. قُلْ أَذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ أَمْ جَنَّةُ الْخُلْدِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ كَانَتْ لَهُمْ جَزَاءً وَمَصِيرًا لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ خَالِدِينَ كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ وَعْدًا مَسْؤُولًا From these two verses from Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He make, he make, uh, He make a right on Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make those who worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pious people to enter Jannah. So our rights on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we worship Him and being pious, to enter Jannah and not to punish us subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from this, dear brothers and sisters, we don't have right on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a good life, to give us uh, uh, beautiful wives, to give us a nice living, a luxury life and uh, a good income and whatever we enjoy in our life. This is not right on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. The right only on Allah is that if we worship him, he will make us to enter Jannah. But what we are enjoying in this life, what we have from his blessings in this life, from being good health, being in good family, Enjoying having nice environment, a beautiful wives, nice cars, whatever blessings we have, it is all luxury. It is all luxury. It is not right on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant it for us. But indeed, because of the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us all that. And the most beautiful and blessings which we are enjoying that he guide us to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he showed us the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent us Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he revealed Al-Quran for us to know the right and the wrong. And he planted in our hearts to recognize between evil and good. Dear brothers and sisters, our rights on Allah, if we worship him, to make us enter Jannah. But indeed, we don't have other rights on Allah. Whatever we have, it is all blessings. It is all from his generosity. And if he stop one thing, we still enjoying many things from his generosity and from his givings. Dear brothers and sisters, Two topics today I talk about. The first one, our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
shouldn't be shaken if something wrong happens to us in this dunya. Our love should continue and keep going because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is our creator and He loves us and that's why we should love Him. He is always there for us. And the second one, our rights on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we worship Him to make us enter Jannah because of His mercy and because of His promise to us. But we don't have other rights on Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hope that we are from those people who remember always that Allah is always there for us. And He never decline from helping us. He never forget about us. And that's why we should always keep our love to Him and never shake our love. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.